let's get started. Why not? Louis Carroll just showed up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring up your very first comic of the night. Not that uh, you guys don't know that. Uh, your very first comic of the night uh, just got out. He's going to be a grandfather. That means that he had a kid and then his kid is now having a kid, which is gross to think about your own kid having sex. Mike, is that weird to think about? Your daughter got plowed by someone you don't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're going to love the thing that comes out of her because of it. Yeah, that's weird, man. Life's weird. Yeah. Don't you think? Yes. Do you think God finds that funny? <laughs> yeah. What do you think God finds funnier? The situation in the Middle East or your wife or your daughter getting fucked? I think my daughter getting fucked. <laughs> I'm in the field, I guess. All right. Your very first meeting of the night, Mike Marr. All right. Oh, yeah. Good evening, folks. Thank, thanks for coming out, everybody. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? You doing okay over there? Non-comedy people, you doing all right? You ready for some jokes? Yes. All right. You got your seatbelt on? Yeah. You know, uh, walking up here, down the street, I had three people tell me that I looked like Einstein. Fair. Yeah. And my wife is even reminded of Einstein in the bedroom. Because I come at the speed of light. Bada boom, bada bang. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, my wife can tell when I'm drunk. Because I slur my farts. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Hey, you're going to like this one. You got to look around here. Look at this. This is one of my favorite jokes. You gotta turn around and look. You gotta turn around and look. Okay, you ready? This is one of my favorite jokes to watch. I'm waiting. That senior moment was brought to you by 50 years of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, baby. Party on, guard! <laughs> it's comedy, baby. It's comedy. <laughs> yeah. I'm retired and I've got a new old man smell. Yeah, it's a combination of old spice, Ben Gay, and poverty. Hey, and I used to save old farts in a jar, but I stopped when I became one. Okay. Keep following, keep following, you're doing good. I got married when I was 34. Look at me now! I'm 36! <laughs> no, seriously. I'm retired. I just feel like I'm 36. My wine is still fine on the vine. Yeah, um, I came home last night. Took a shower. Walked into the bedroom naked. And my wife pointed and said, you ought to put that little bit in your act. <laughs> yeah. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm handy. I'm handsome. I think I'm a good catch. Hey. Yeah. I do all the maintenance around the house. I periodically check my equipment to make sure it's operational. And my wife calls it jerking off. Yeah, uh, I used to think I was good at math, like Einstein, but I discovered very quickly that I'm better at drinking. Yeah, my version of E equals MC squared, Everclear equals me seeing double. Yeah, my wife says, way to go, Einstein. Yeah, so, uh, does anybody here want an old granddad? <laughs> yeah, um, I got a bottle in the trunk of my car. <laughs> it's the best bourbon whiskey you can get on a fixed budget. 
All right, so I'm, uh, people think that I'm profound. Yeah. But I'm actually just anti lost. <laughs> That'll take a second. That'll take a second. Yeah, people, people think that, um, you know, I um, look a lot like Fred Flintstone. 2024. Wait a minute, what was it? 2024, what is that? You're here, you're now. It's not 2024 yet, dude. We'll figure it out. Alright. We'll work it out, we'll work it out. Everything's okay. Alright. Live in the present, man. Live in the present. Yeah, so, um... So we all say. <laughs> I, got, I got one more. No, I got a couple more here. I got I'll a couple more. Your paint on Oh no, oh no, oh no. You're doing okay, you're doing all right. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, but I'm anti-lost. You know, I said that already, so I'll pick up where I left off. But I don't care. I have a hero that I look up to for the way that I live my life in 2024. And listen, my feeling is if it's good enough for Flint, <laughs> Fred Flintstone, it's good enough for me. Yabba fucking dabba fucking do. Yeah. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on and put some time in, folks. Yeah, I take naps. I take a lot of naps. Einstein was famous for his. But I've taken more. My younger, my younger daughter calls me Sleepless Norris. And my wife calls me an old man who snores and farts at the same time. <laughs> And she says I sound a lot like Indigata De Vida by Iron Butterfly. That's a 70s uh, reference there, kids. <laughs> My naps are back to back. That's two people, one after the other. That's retired. And of course, I worked in government for 20 years. So my days really aren't that different. Go figure. Okay, after 50 years, this is your brain on drugs. Next month, I'm going to my 50th class reunion. Yeah, big milestone, big milestone. Hey, has anybody gone to their reunion this year? Anybody? Hey, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> yeah. Listen, showing up in person is so 70s anyhow. Hey, just a little heads up for those of you who I did not like in high school, I still don't like you. And for my classmates in memoriam, please stop ghosting me on the internet. I mean, really. It's getting, getting kind of spooky. Yeah. Hey, so uh, for the class of 73, my class, let's be honest. There's no more trying to look great at the 50-year reunion. There's no more going to the gym, losing weight, getting Botox, facelifts, boob jobs. And that's just the guys I'm talking about. New time, new time. All right, yeah. Now it's all about hip, knee, and spousal replacements. Yeah. <laughs> Heart bypass surgery, liver transplants, knee braces. All of this to get me on my little rascal that I tow around on the back of my car. To get me to the doctor and back. Yeah. I'll close it out with this. At age 13, 
I was a pimple-faced, overactive, hormonal factory. A freshman in high school. Yeah. My older sister was a cheerleader, and one of her friends came over, and I was sitting in the living room with the Sears catalog in the lingerie section reading that. And her friend walked by and winked at me. And I came in my pants. <laughs> and my sister yells, Mom, Mike came in his pants again. <laughs> and Mom said, what the heck is wrong with that kid? I'm tired of cleaning up my future grandkids. <laughs> Offer your skivvies. <laughs> Use a rubber 24-7. And Dad said, hey, that's my boy. All right, folks, listen, with geriatric stand-up fall season year-round, you have been fan-freaking-tastic. Yeah. Mike Marr doing his first 17 minute set, everybody. Go another round of applause. <laughs> wow. That font has to be incredibly small on that piece of paper for you to have that many jokes. <laughs> that, is, that is wild. Mike Marr is all 81 uh, year old comedians do, ending with a joke about coming in his own pants, <laughs> which, uh, frankly, your age, if you're only coming in your pants, that's pretty good. That's uh, not what we all would have guessed, but I still feel bad for the nurse who has to clean. Uh, all right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Um, welcome to the two folks in the back who just came out. Thank you. Like, uh, I like you too. You're like, uh, you're like a more attractive Taylor Swift than Travis Kelsey. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're never going to look at you. We're just going to cut to her every five seconds. You don't mind. Uh, this is a sort of weird thing. My wife is pregnant. And uh, right lately, I've been having um, I've been having trouble having sex with my wife. Um, not because I'm not attracted. I'm still very attracted to my wife. You I'm very attracted to silver. Are we catching this? I'm ve I'm very attracted to you, honey. I'm very attracted to my pregnant wife. But I'm finding it difficult to have sex with her lately. Like, sir, sir, you're in the bathroom. Sir. Have you ever had sex with someone while you're actively being kicked off of them? Answer carefully. No? Well, I have. And it's a bit of a boner killer. This goes to show what careers are not open to me in my life. <laughs> Brian. All right. Uh, no, no, you don't care. You have, you have power through. You're a man. I'm not a man. Uh, all right. We're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comedian coming up here. Uh, do you guys, uh, you guys have any family that loves you? No? Then you're going to love your next comedian. You're going to love him great. His entire family, everyone's left him behind, and now he has to listen to everybody else's great Thanksgiving stories. Put your hands together for a guy who's getting some fucking peace on Thursday, Ben Pierce. <laughs> ben Pierce, everybody. So I've got a question. Uh, when Ben said that everyone votes on the news now, the back of the room has come to a consensus that you yelled out, whites only. <laughs> Is that what you yelled out? Did you yell out, whites only? That's what we all thought you said. I mean, the entire back of this room thought you yelled out, whites only, when you said, we vote on the news. And my question, I don't care if you said it. Hey, man, your beliefs, your beliefs, I don't vote that way, but you do you. But I just want to know what it meant. I want to know what you meant when you yelled out, whites only. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I guess we'll figure it out. <laughs> I hope we figure it out peacefully. Well, no maps, no no, 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 we'll figure it out. We'll All right, yeah, like white men would. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, that was weird. <laughs> hey, Silver, if you could do me a favor, just delete the part where I yelled like white men would into a microphone. That would, I'd appreciate that. Uh, ben was right. Ben is, ben is correct that we don't really have, uh, with that, before emojis, we only had to... Cranky up enough. What's that? Cranky up enough. Oh yeah, I just did that. You want to do it some more? Yeah. All right, and then and then that way we won't hear you when you yell whites only. Right. I got it. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Uh, ben was right that uh, before emojis. By the way, you guys, you are sitting in literally the, the loudest part. If you'd like to actually hear what people are saying, you can come up here. There's a spot. Uh, we can. 
You gonna come up? All right, perfect. Hold on, one second. I'm gonna turn the table around for you. Alright, just so we all know, you can roast him, but not her. And you cannot roast him by roasting her, and he will roast back. And if you get the better of him, him and his white brother are going to kick your ass. Were you part of that? I don't know if you're part of that. I'm a ginger, I'm not white. Okay, well, yeah, hey, you know what? I'm using that too when they come for it, so that's fine. Alright, anyway, we're going to keep this thing moving. I'm going to give up on the thing I was going to say on Ben's thing. Uh, we're going to keep the show moving. Your next comic, now I'm going to warn you, this was not a trap, I just realized it's poor programming. Your next comic is a slow motion train wreck. He is a Richmond experience. You know like the haunted house, you can read about it, but it's not the same as walking through it, right? Your next comic's material on the page makes no sense, but like a haunted house, when he jumps out and pinches you during the hayride, you're like, you're not allowed to touch me, but he does anyways. You ready? Here he comes, everybody. Put your hands together for Brian Fontaine. You had a vasectomy? <laughs> oh, I knew that, actually. It, it was in the news. It made history. The first court-ordered vasectomy. <laughs> right? This last guy, Ben Pierce? Right? This Pierce? Looks like, looks like Gru had a despicable set. From, uh, <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. Uh, what's up? Uh, that wasn't serious. What is serious? I'm running for fucking president. First, act. Once I get the office, I'm gonna give all uh, little people guns. Because <laughs> if you think about it, what's, what's to stop me from saying the M slur, you know what I mean? You're like down here, and you gotta give them guns, other, otherwise, you know, I'm literally just gonna punch down on you. Literally and physically and repeatedly. Guys, the only thing getting in between me and saying midget is a midget with a gun. You know, little guy's got a desert eagle pointed at me. You know, I can't say the N-word. But... I am allowed to think and imagine in my head this little guy is shooting off a desert eagle and go, what? He just gets blown back from the recoil. Recoil. Gun users? You guys shoot guns? Okay. Me neither. I'll let it go. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. Um, what else? Guys, I'm a work of art. Um, I'm gorgeous. I've been seeing an artist lately. She's been painting me. You know, we'll listen to music, stretch me, and she'll paint me. And I learned something about myself. I'm a kind of a little fucking bitch of a model. Just a fussy little model. Hey, um, I noticed you filled in a little more neck fat there. Um, you know, just kind of backseat painting when it's a picture of me. Yeah, I thought you were going to fill in a little bit more of the hairline there. Cool. I'm not a work of art. Alright, this is good. Guys, this hasn't gone well so far. 
hey look, maybe I'll go back to my day job. No, my day job is not drinking, sir. Um, do you know what a geisha is? A geisha? Right? So, I'm kind of like that, but like on the street corner. You know what I mean? So, like, I get all dolled up, do the makeup and, like, the robe, the silk dress, and, you know, the do my hair, the singing. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm on the street corner, you know? So we're talking like $5 sucky suckies here. <laughs> it's not a... It's not a day job that I like. I like to do this. I prefer this a lot better. Um, <laughs> what else? God damn it. Did you just... No, you didn't. Um, you guys like condoms? Anybody like to use condoms at all? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> no, no. Um, I was in the rare position the other day. I got to rock a magnum. At so this chick's house, she's like, I'm out of, I'm out of condoms. Okay. Okay. She, then she like finally caves and she's like, here, use this. And I noticed it's a fucking magnum. <laughs> and I'm like, shut up. Go get, go get, go get married. Asshole. No, um. You know, surprising, surprisingly to me, we got it done, you know? We got it done. I didn't fill it out. Um, but it fit. You know when, like, you're wearing a beanie? <laughs> you just, like, kind of, like, cuff it? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, kind of what, kind of like what Louis rocking. That was me in a magnum condom, just more light skin. Um, sorry. That was rude. <laughs> but I don't like using condoms. I don't like them. Don't like condoms. <laughs> That's why I came up with this idea of uh, pussy juice soluble condoms, you know? Oh! Hey, what about that, right? This way we both get a little, give a little take. No harm, no foul, you know what I'm talking about? No harm, no foul. Except for, you know, the abortion. I've, I've been told that those hurt. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Brian Fontaine. Awesome. Brian Fontaine. What a nice, charming man who ends with pussy juice soluble condoms and abortions hurt. You know my favorite part of the MSA was? He said, abortions. I hear those hurt. Then he did this. The middle school photo look. Like, hmm. They hurt. With the laser background. Lasers are the shit. You ever use a magnum condom? Yeah, me too, but I had to get a big fish out of the bucket. So I was like, get the, get the magnum condom. It's an 11 inch trout. I was like, I need a mag, I gotta get this sucker out of there. I don't know, I don't know why my girlfriend had it, because we broke up when she started, well, never mind, you don't care about that. Um, let's get this thing moving along, everybody. Hey, let me ask you a question, as a ginger, as a ginger fella, you ever get like a dry forehead? 
You're a liar. You're gonna dry forehead all the time. The fucking sun's exposed on it. I'll touch your forehead right now. God damn, look at that hairline, you son of a bitch. It goes away when you turn 28, believe me. I am 28. It's going away soon. I'm sorry to tell you. I hate to be the ghost of Christmas future, but here you go. All right. Uh, I don't know where it's going with that at all. I have my mother blocked. Like my mother can't text me anymore. My mother, um, she learned how to text, and she sends very short texts, and she doesn't know how to use periods. She only uses ellipses. Which means every single thing she texts me seems like it's the end of the world. You ever gotten an 11.30 p.m. text her? My mother goes, hey, dot, dot, dot. And then it takes her 22 minutes to send the next text, just letting you know she was thinking of you. Dot, dot, dot. Like, what the fuck? Dot, I'm thinking of you, dot, dot, dot. Is my mom about to text me she wants to fuck me at one in the morning? What the hell is happening here? What about the ellipses? That's bizarre. She wants to send me things like, hey, dot, dot, dot. Dad had a rough day at work, dot, dot, dot. So I'm thinking my dad's dead, you know? Turns out he dropped his cigarettes in a puddle. That's the other thing, my mother doesn't know what to text about. She's like, that's important. Then when my uncle died, I found out three weeks later just in the backyard. She's like, oh, by the way, your uncle Brian's dead. It's like, what? It's like, yeah, he's been dead, uh, oh, beginning of March. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Turns out he was alive. It was a big joke. All right, moving on. Your next comedian coming to the stage is, um, he's a beacon of sunshine. He's a totem of serenity. He is what most of the comics in this city call the Richmond Comedy Buddha because he is unflappable, he is kind, and he's got a fat belly that you can rub for good luck. Put your hands together for the chubby Jack Parker. Jack Parker, everybody. His dad went to seminary, but his mom had 10 kids. Sounds like she went to seminary, huh? Huh, am I right? Am I right, everybody? Yeah, I, I think Jesus would give a bad hand job because my God's not gay. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I really wanted to sell it, but then I thought about it. I was like, you might be gay, I don't know. We haven't had a talk about it. Normally when I talk to my God, it's about me. I'm like, ah, oh, my life's so hard right now. Oh, please make my wife calm down. You know, stuff like that. I never asked, like, hey, hey, God, real quick, what's up with you? How are things up there, being outside in space and time? Is it chill or are you stressed about things? Are you stressed about things that are happening now that are happening millennia from now? I don't know. It's crazy. All right. Uh, wow, Jack Parker. What, is, what an experience that was. Um, we're going to keep this show moving, everybody, and we have one of our loudest free Thanksgiving shows ever. Your next comment. All right, this guy is gone. I don't know what his deal is, but I'm going to tell you, your next performer is a good old boy. This guy works on a farm that he owns, and he's in his late 20s. A very young late 20s, and that's a good age. That's how they talk about uh, other creatures on the farm. They say whether it's a good age or not. Yeah, yeah. His, uh, his dad is a little tough in the joints. You know what I mean? A little sinewy up on the farm. Anyways, your next performer works on a farm that he owns. He raises soybeans. And despite that, he's still a man. Because he does not cut to his own supply. You know what I mean? Now, thanks to the policies of Fred, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he does have to destroy 33% of his crop every year so as not to affect global markets. But, that might be getting too deep into the politics of the 1930s and 40s. Your next performer works on a farm that he owns and he has never fucked a sheep. Put your hands together. By the way, Jack Parker asked a trick question. He said, when's the first time you jacked off without feeling shame? And I said 13. I do want to make it clear that I jacked off before the age of 13. He said, without shame. I jerked off a lot with shame. That's why I'm into Findom nowadays. I married a doctor, it's fine. She's from the Midwest, so she never says it, but I know she's thinking it. 
your next performer has never fucked a woman with a job. Put your hands together for a man who lives and owns a farm, Steve Jones. I don't ever want to hear you talk about gelding again. That was uncomfortable. I don't know what gelding is, Jacob. Oh, okay. Because I'm not a real farmer, everybody. That was all a lie. I'm actually, I'm actually going to start my set off a little different than uh, the rest of the comics you've seen. If you guys don't mind, I'd like to start it off with a little bit of scripture. Oh, all right. We're okay with this? Yeah, farm style, baby. The Gospel, according to John. Dear Diary. Jesus said one of his apostles is going to betray him, and I'm so nervous it's going to be me. Unrelated, he also asked me to wash my feet. That seemed a little gay, which I thought was hypocritical, but he was the boss, so I let him do it anyways. The word of the Lord. All right, that was great. Um, do you guys believe that we were created in God's image? Anybody believe that? Ma'am? Yeah. I like, I like to think so, at least. You know, it makes me, like, God-adjacent, which I think is cool. But it begs the question, you know, like, what kind, what kind of God am I? What kind of God should I be? I'll give you an example. The other night, I was brushing my teeth in the bathroom, and I went down to go wash my mouth out from the spigot, and there was a spider there. And I was like, you know what? I kind of appreciate that you probably eat all these bugs inside of my bathroom. I'm going to spare your life. Makes me seem like a merciful God, right? But then he moved just a little bit too close to my face and I immediately poof, smited him right down the fucking drain. I know his arc his ass. He wanted to meet his God and he did and his God killed him. It was like... It was like that spider was the Nazis and Raiders of the Lost Ark and I was the Ark of the Covenant. Alright. You, uh, you guys have any pets? <laughs> he said no, no. <laughs> I got a, uh, I got a dog. A dog keeps eating all this shit she's not supposed to eat. That's annoying. Um, she got herself into a little bit of a trouble the other day when I got home and I found a eight gram magic mushrooms chocolate bar wrapper on the ground. Yeah, I was like. Fuck, this dog is going to be in such big trouble. She's like a 35 pound dog. The best part about this, by the way, was that it was my, my girlfriend's Magic Mushroom Bar. Like, it wasn't mine. I was like, thank fucking God that was her bar, because I would never go to the end of that. But I knew something was up, because her, like, her pupils were the size of, like, dollars. She was, like, stress crying a lot. She was, like, shitting all over the yard. And that's when I realized that mushrooms affect dogs the exact same way that they affect me. Because I'm always shitting in the yard. I fucked up a part of that joke, so we're just going to move on. I've been thinking about uh, cancel culture a little bit lately. None of these jokes are related to everybody. Like, I think it's a good thing, you know, that People that have done terrible things could be held accountable for them in the future because they were like recorded or something like that. But it made me think like, what about all the shitty people that are dead now? Like the people that you cannot cancel anymore. Like what dead celebrities are out there that probably would have been canceled if they were still around? What do you think like, uh, you guys know who Ernest Hemingway is? He's a great American author, renowned. This guy was actually like a huge misogynistic asshole. He actually has a quote. It goes, uh, courage is just grace under pressure. And women shouldn't be able to vote if they're too tall. Or uh, John Legend. Can you imagine him on Twitter? John Lennon. <laughs> John Legend, the legendary legend. Can you guys imagine John Lennon on Twitter? He's like, all you need is love. Love, love, love is all you need. 
and this might be a hot take, but if you beat the shit out of your wife, I think you should probably be forgiven for it. Well, he got shot. He did get shot. <laughs> That's good. Great point, sir. Great point. Um, hot take. <laughs> number one, though, the number one celebrity that's dead that would be totally canceled today is uh, Osama Bin Laden. Right? He's like, you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> that's against the rules. <laughs> They'd be like, dude, did you hear that Osama tweeted that infidels are gay? That's not cool. All right, last, last dead celebrity that'd be canceled is uh, Bob Dylan. All right, Bob Dylan's alive. I just, I just, I just think that's like, super surprising. Okay. Um, here's some completely unrelated jokes. We're gonna keep going on that train. I was rollerblading the other day, and I got catcalled. Yeah, the guy rolled down his window, saw me, and just went, pussy! Have you guys ever heard of a suicide pack before? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Me and my friends, we have this thing called a vehicular manslaughter pact. It means we've already agreed ahead of time that if we're driving together and somebody runs somebody else over, like the passenger, they're just, they're just gonna follow the driver's lead. So it's like, doo -doo. oh my fucking God, I hit that guy. It's like, funny, we're gonna, we're gonna get through this. It'll be okay. But on the flip side, it's just, doo -doo. All right, it's one of the secrets we keep the rest of our lives. I'm not a, uh, not a very smart guy. Um, like for example, I, I just learned that Tila Tequila and Chrissy Teigen are not the same person. You guys all knew this. I've never seen them in the same room together. I'm not convinced that they're not the same person. We're gonna abandon that right now. <laughs> I have like eight more minutes of Tila Tequila material, guys. I've been trying to uh, better myself a little bit lately. I've been going to the YMCA downtown to work out. If you guys don't know, the YMCA in downtown Richmond can be pretty fucking weird. There's a lot of weird people that are in that YMCA, especially in the, uh, in the sauna. <laughs> Yeah, I was in the sauna the other day. There's this whole crew of guys that hang out in there that I've never, ever seen work out once. Which means they all get together and they're like, yo, let's go sweat our dicks off in a place that looks like the set of Saw 1. <laughs> I was in there and this cockroach came across the floor and went right by the dude's ball sack, which was like two inches off the ground. He was an old guy. Um, he looks at this cockroach. He's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of uh, dead skin and sweat in here. I bet cockroaches love it. <laughs> I'm like, true, true? Before I can respond to that, a YMCA staff member walks in. He's like, hey, is everything all right in here? And I want to be like, no. <laughs> but I was curious, so I asked him. I was like, dude, why are you like checking in on the people in the sauna? This is a little strange. He's like, oh, well, we figured out that this sauna, it's on an anonymous gay hookup site. Apparently a lot of dudes in here were sitting on each other's laps. I thought that was disgusting. I jumped right up off my buddy's lap and I walked right out of that sauna. See, the punchline to that one is, ha ha ha, I'm gay, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this has been great. That's the card. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Get Jacob. Steve Jones, everybody. I don't know, I've never realized more how much Steve Jones looks like a guy, like if you're in middle school, he'd come over and teach you how to ollie and then want to talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like that guy. Woo. By the way, there is Steve Center, if you notice, it got a lot quieter in here. There is a table downstairs, and the woman sitting there making the table. She just loudly screams right to Steve Center. She goes, Israel, Palestine, I'm sick of it. <laughs> Which I thought was refreshing because you know finally a new take on that war. Like it's annoying. I agree. You know who cares what side you're on? Can we talk about something else? And then they all left. So I, I you know, I guess, I guess we're gonna go talk about something else. I don't know. 
Alright, we are moving along guys. Your next comic, I'm proud to say finally we have a good comic on the show tonight. In fact, this is the thing where I'm going to build your next performer up way too much. Your next performer can no longer perform on the open mic competition show at the Funny Bun because he has won it too many times. He has literally been voted the best comic in the city too many times they won't even let him compete anymore. They've retired his comedy jersey. This guy is so fucking funny that honestly, I paid him to be here tonight. I'm giving him $20. Your next comic is an actual professional, certifiably, okay? If your next comic, he's got a guarantee, it's on his website, you can go to his website, he'll give you a social media, believe me, he'll give it to you three or four times. Your next comic, if he doesn't make you laugh, he'll buy you three drinks. Put your hands together. International superstar. They call him the Big Kevin Hart. <laughs> it's Josh Ward. Let's go, Kevin. <laughs> I really can't stay, baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go away, baby, it's cold outside. Y'all know that song? Hey, what the hell are we doing out here in this cold weather, white people? I'm black, man. I don't really like come out in the wintertime like that for real, for real. Like, my back look like sidewalk chalk on a tar driveway right now. Last year's hell. <laughs> Y'all had to deal with it, white people. We ass shot in the cold winds of weather and shit, man. You know what I'm saying? You like that song? I'm be honest. Am I the only one to find this song a little bit concerning? Like, I'm gonna be honest. The most rapey Christmas song there ever was. <laughs> like, come on, man. She's like, I really must go. Baby, it's cold outside. The answer is no. My bitch is cold outside. Goddamn it. <laughs> That's not a good reason to keep this woman hostage in your house and shit, but he did it, man. He did it. It's some amazing shit, man. I love that song, man. He just cut, cutely cuddled up around the fireplace listening to this lady's kidnapping audio. Like it's a good time and shit, you know what I'm saying? She should do the same with. Same with what? She seems to be. She's trying to sing herself out of a molestation, nigga. <laughs> She's not singing along because she love me track, nigga. It's crazy. Nobody's gonna get this lady some help. Like, I think she's starting to realize this shit after a while too, cause she like, what's in this drink? A roofie, bitch. A roofie. Get the fuck out of there. That's not weird to y'all. Y'all love that song? Yeah. I love the holiday season. Like, I'm like Elf when Santa comes around when this time of year comes. Be honest, I could wait. Ah, Christmas. Sorry. Trying to hold my outburst in the whole time. Man. It's, it's wild out here, man. I got kids now, so that's you know that makes Christmas so much better. So they say. Uh, it's just not true. Cause kids ask for wild shit now. You know what I'm saying? Like kids ask for stuff we didn't ask for. When we were growing up. Christmas was like tell your parents what you want, and when they get something like it, you know what I'm saying? Like these kids actually expect to get what they ask for. And shit. Like who does that? Get you what you ask for, nigga. Ugh, something like it. I went to my oldest the other day and he was like, Daddy, I want a Mac truck for Christmas. I was like, son, I respect that. I didn't know Apple made vehicles out there. You know, I, I didn't know they was into that, you know? But apparently they are. I'm out here making cars and shit. He was like, no, no, I mean, a Mac truck. He literally wants the shit that 95 is being paid with right now. You know what I'm saying? As a gift. Who asked for a Mack truck, bitch? He know I ain't gonna get it for him, but he figured if he asked for something big, you know, he asked for a Mack truck, you know. Yeah, he might get an F-150 out of this shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm not getting it for him either, but, you know. Tonka made good Mack trucks, Tonka. He gonna be mad as hell when he can't sit in it. <laughs> it's cool though, man, it's wild. That song is crazy though, man. Cause I just always wondered, did she get out of there? You know what I'm saying? At the end of it all, because she's not at home. She's at the guy's house in this song. And she got there. It wasn't cold enough to abduct this home, but it's too cold to release her. You know what I'm saying? That, that shit blows me away. Blows me away. Anybody else excited about the holidays? You guys got kids? You guys a couple? You don't have kids? You guys married or you just dating? Dating. Just dating? How long have you been dating? Three days. <laughs> Three days? Yeah, Lee, I see the jubilation on your face, man. 
This when you bought her on the third day day? Yeah. Did y'all know this was going on? Yeah. So y'all came on purpose. Yeah. Don't tell anyone else. Oh. Um, <laughs> like, hoes out here mad about the Cheesecake Factory. You damn sure can't bring them to Home Sweet Home. What is this? She suggested it. She suggested it? You, you like the comedy? Yeah. You ever done this before? No. We love you. Like, as comedians, we need more. Y'all give her a round of applause. Like, we need more people who love the thing. Your cheeks hurt? Oh, you've been having a hell of a time. Your cheeks hurt. Those rosy cheeks, man. Those strong cheeks. They look like they've been working out a lot in life. So third, this is your third date or your third time? Third day. Third day. Y'all been dating every day, huh? Third date. Okay, that's cool. Third date, sorry. First date. What y'all go for y'all first date? Yeah. Home Team Grill. Home Team Grill. Yeah. You suggested that too? <laughs> you just one of the boys, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> I need to hang out with you. What's your name? I'm Mara. Mara? Yeah. What's your name? Jack. Jack and Mara. All right. That sounds weird together, but I think you'll make it. Oh. <laughs> you guys been single for a while? You just trying it out again? Everybody's like, no, I've been sleeping around. I don't know what you call that. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> you've been getting a lot of cock. <laughs> Before Jack got here, it's like, Jack, I'm playing. Didn't I'm, matter. Didn't matter. <laughs> Just enjoying yourself out here. Huh? How old are you, Mara? 27. 27? Okay, those slutty years coming to an end, huh? All right, let's see what it's settled down, you know? Jack, you caught around a good time now. This is good time, 27? They're ready to act right, you know, get themselves together a little bit. You know what I mean? You, you, you That's what you need, man. She realizing all her hopes and dreams are lies now, you know? It's a good time for you. Plant a good seed, Jack. Literally. Um, deep. Deep. <laughs> you look like you got some seeds growing already, girl. You fur? No, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> She said, oh Jesus, I hope not, no. You can have some little kids and you can be planning Christmas next year, don't you worry. They can be asking y'all for ridiculous shit too. Um, anyway, it was nice to meet y'all. I'm Josh Ward, guys. Thanks for your time. Y'all have a great night. I'm going to talk to you later. Josh Ward, everybody. Now, I did tell, you heard me tell everybody, like, not, don't pick on her. And technically, he wasn't picking on you. I mean, hoping that you're fertile, it's good, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That was, I was, I, I was, I was uncomfortable. I was like, uh, you know what? If she wants to procreate, she will. Hey, how you doing? You got to pee? I do. Yeah, come on in. Come on in and pee. I'm in. Yeah, you know what's yes. up, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drain it. Drain it, baby. <laughs> Alright, now I realize this is going to be a weird situation for you to walk up into, so I guess I'll just filibuster till he's out of there. Uh, yeah, it's you next. No, 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 Scotty, you know, he's later on the show. Uh, every bit of me wants to hold the microphone up to that door right now, because if I do that, you will hear the pee coming out. I've done it before. It's very unprofessional, and they've asked me not to do it anymore. But I really want to. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a bitch. You see, Jack, that's why I still have a room and you don't. Uh, <laughs> Jack Parker just lost his room. It's the second room he's lost since I moved back to Richmond. Uh, no connection. Um, all right. Your next comic coming to the stage. Did everybody like we have not seen her in a while? Why haven't we seen you in so long? All right, just that luck. By the way, wow, my God, I feel maybe I, I just felt like I got turned down for a day. That was so uncomfortable, and weird. Next time, just tell me you've been washing your hair every night during doing this. That was that was weird for me. Uh, your next comic, very funny. I see nobody. Go ahead, put your hands together for Nadine Donaghy. It's been a minute, and uh, Jacob, you look good. 
I'm down 30 pounds. Thank you. Yeah. Losing weight during your wife's pregnancy like a selfish douche? <laughs> I'm so mad. I would be too. I wouldn't love you anymore a little. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> I was just sitting over there and I was thinking this poor woman growing his freaking seed and he's going to the gym. I would, like, I would slash your tires. I would be so mad. Even worse, I'm doing it at home in front of her. <laughs> I'm very inconsiderate. Cool, so you're doing that and you can't get her off. This is like the greatest nine months of her life. <laughs> can't get her off, but I can get her up. That's what counts. Oh, man. Uh, um, yo, know, honestly, I'm trying to be like Jacob. I'm trying to get a little bit more in shape. It means I have to work out when I get home from this. Uh, see, I like to wait until it's late at night to do my exercising when I'm at my crankiest. Because, you know, if I don't hate myself when I'm working out, like, what is even the point, really? Uh, uh, no, I have. I've been I'm trying to lose weight. Uh, for me, I'm the type of person where I have to be really careful when I'm going through a diet, like, space, because I'm pretty much right on the borderline of, like, being crazy. So the rule that I give myself is, as long as whatever I'm doing, I would be willing to say out loud to another human being, then I think it's fine, go ahead. But if you're like, ooh, what if for this whole month I only ate 300 calories a day? <laughs> and if I know that I wouldn't say that out loud to someone, then I'm like, mm, I don't think you can do that thing. Uh, no, uh, sorry. It's funny to me. Like, <laughs> this mental illness is funny to me. Especially because it is pretty much the only mental illness where people congratulate you when you're at your worst. And I secretly love that. It's like, well, don't give me too many compliments. You might give me the self-esteem I need to finish this salad. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm only joking. I would never let myself eat this late at night. <laughs> uh, no, you guys are probably like, oh, Nadine, which, which one do you have? Do you, like, starve yourself in silence, or do you have the yucky one? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Princess Diana had bulimia, and you can't get classier than that. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you know, I was thinking the other day about women who were like really, really thin, like crazy thin. The type of thin where when you look at them, you're like, I wish you would eat something. And not even in the like, I'm secretly trying to destroy you type way. <laughs> Just in like a loving, feminist, concern for your health type of thing. I was thinking about these women and I feel like every time I see one, they always have a boyfriend. And I wonder if it's because they don't have the strength to fight. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I have, I've always struggled with like my weight and mental issues with it. Uh, I feel like if someone had asked me my weight at the age of eight, I would have been like, it fluctuates. <laughs> Um, but I have, I've never wanted to be that skinny, like skinny to the point where you're concerned for the person's safety. And it, that's mostly because I would never want to lose my curves the way that a lot of those women kind of do. And the other day I was eating outside and I stood up and there was a dead bee where I had been sitting. Like he had clearly silently suffocated under my butt. <laughs> And then, just like a few minutes later, I found a dead mosquito in my cleavage. <laughs> so like, these curves could kill, and uh, they did, twice today. <laughs> uh, the other day I was at the pharmacy, and I was at CVS. I made an impulse purchase. People tend to do this at the pharmacy. I saw something, I was like, oh, you know what? Let's throw that on the register. Uh, it was Narcan. <laughs> So like if anyone wants to overdose, I got you, but it has to be on an opioid. <laughs> and uh, it was very expensive. So when you come to, we can talk about the $50 you owe me. <laughs> it's okay, I'm just taking their money away so they can't use it on more drugs. <sighs> um, let's see, what other random stupid thoughts do I have? <laughs> uh, so you know what I was thinking about the other day is, have you guys ever seen in like movies and TV shows, whenever a guy is struggling with impotence, the like go-to line that they have him say is, this never happens. That's what he always says. 
Uh, it's fun, because it's kind of like he's being like, never before have I been less attracted to someone. <laughs> like, I didn't even know it was possible for someone to not be able to get me hard. <laughs> I'm sure that's just exactly what the person wants to hear. Uh, you know, I actually read this book, Mindhunter, and it's a book about serial killers from like an FBI profiler's perspective. Several of those murders start out with impotence. Uh, and a lot of the other ones start out with like the guy getting fired from his job. I just like this concept that men are like, if I am embarrassed, someone will die. It's, a very, it's an extreme way to go with it, but I mean, I guess it's one less person to be embarrassed in front of. Uh, I do, I think it's funny that men, you know what, no, I don't want to do that I, How much time are we doing? Uh, you got a minute left. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just do some stuff. Uh, I am pretty afraid of almost everything. Uh, like anything that someone could have a fear of, I usually have that fear. Uh, I'm really afraid of heights. To me, it's weird when people say that they're afraid of heights and they only get freaked out if they're like 500 feet off the ground. If you put me like six feet off the ground, I'm like, this would hurt. Like, I can't just jump safely down from any given height. I'm not Ted Bundy. Oh. <laughs> uh, my niece was over today, and I was napping, and I woke up from my nap to her giving me a full-on kiss on the mouth. And I was like, well, now that I'm awake, what a great time for us to talk about consent. <laughs> Uh, my niece the other day, uh, she was looking at her Christmas presents that are under the tree, and she picks up this jump rope, but she has no idea that that's what it is, and she's feeling all the presents trying to figure out what they are, and she was like, is this a snake? And I was like, we'll see you on Christmas, like, have you been naughty or nice? <laughs> we'll see how Santa dies you. <laughs> Alright, thanks, you guys are very great. Nadine Donaghy, everybody. Give over Nadine Donaghy. <laughs> Nadine Donaghy is the second comic tonight to ask me if I've lost weight, which means come out for the first show in December. I'll be doing it in a uh, tank top. Uh, I'll just be up here strutting my stuff. That's actually not true. At my heaviest, I was 230 pounds. I got stretch marks all over here. I could be fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm still not showing my arms off. Uh, it's like I'm a cutter, but without the emotional release. Uh, all right. Uh, Nadine, you made me laugh. You said, uh, men, men, uh, they, they can't get erect. They always say, this has never happened before. Which I can't relate to, because I'm an Irish alcoholic. So I always go, you shouldn't let me drink so much. <laughs> I turn it right back around. It's on them. God damn it. All right. Your next comic coming to the stage. Do you like, um, eh, sort of anemic white boys? Uh, yeah, me neither. Get some fucking iron in your blood, dude. Your next comic could use more iron in his diet. He could use a stiffer backbone. And more than that, he could use some chutzpah. This guy loves the Jews. Everybody put your hands together for the philo-Semitic Will Minor. Baruch Adonai, everybody. Bring out the Manischewitz and tilt that camera up. I'm about to go up. Will Minor, everybody. And now we're down to our final few comics. Before we bring up your next comic, though, I just have to say, I'm very happy we live in an age now where it's okay to, like, deny science. You know what I mean? Like, I'm tired of scientists telling me how shit works, because they're fucking wrong. Like, you know that thing where, like, bugs don't come from food? They come from other bugs? That's bullshit. You ever throw away banana peel? The house is full of bugs immediately. Gotta come for the banana peel. And the blood thing. He brought up blood? You're telling me I had the same amount of blood as like a big old fat person, it's the same volume of blood in both of us. That's bullshit. Also, big old fat people have higher blood pressure, even though they got more body and the same amount of blood, that doesn't make any fucking sense. I wasn't vaccinated. <laughs> Just shorthand for why I don't believe that everyone has blood. I think blood is a conspiracy theory. It's just a bunch of microchips that flows through your fingertips. It's nonsense. It's how they track us. 
Your next comic doesn't believe any of the crazy things I believe. He believes all of his own crazy things that he came with on his own. Oh, I thought that was someone important coming upstairs. Okay, your next comedian, your next comedian, very funny guy. We haven't seen him here in a while. Everybody put your hands together for the one and only Devon Simmons. Devon Simmons, everybody. We are down to our final, I think, two comics of the evening. It's been a fun show before Thanksgiving. It's, uh, they're talking about how much fun they're having. That's good. We won't interrupt. Maybe I'll mic it up. I'll use it as testimonial on the website. Uh, all right. We're going to keep this thing moving. This is true. Uh, I, I recently, like, I broke the bed while having sex with my wife. And my wife was, I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to think she's fat and, and blame me, right? And she was like, wow, you did it good. And then, because I'm Catholic, my brain was immediately like, no, I bought a cheap-ass bed frame off Amazon Basics. <laughs> I bought, this thing is like a couple of bent pipes just to hold the frame up. This is, this is bullshit on my part. And it scratched the wood floor, so I really got fucked up both ends on that deal. Alright, here we go, everybody. We're down to your final couple of comics. Your next comic. We have not seen this guy in a while, because he has not been here in a while, everybody. I know, you might think, boy, everyone he introduced tonight, he says hasn't been here in a while. And that's true, I'm very unpopular. But your next comic is even more unpopular than me. Put your hands together for what everyone in this city considers the most despicable, heinous, and frankly racist comic we have. We used to call him the Hopewell Horror. It's Louis Carroll. Jacob do jokes, right? We've all, we've all seen Jacob do jokes. I'm the victim here. <laughs> Alright, let's get some jokes out. Um, I picked two Ali guys. And I'm not talking about high school. Ali than that. Kindergarten. You know that saying who was a person? I never do that. I'm the person who never grows. I'm the same size I was in kindergarten that I am now. <laughs> You know what I say? I say nap time's over, testosterone. Can we fix this? As to be tall as a kid. Remember how cool that was to be tall as a kid? Remember that kid? That was a kid. You know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Got my driving license, drove up to the puberty tall and couldn't pay it. I got stuck there. What other guy, what other cars have changed? They got taller than me. They made a twin. Where's my change? They fucked up the rhythm of that joke so hard, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spit up, I spit up. Um, women love tall guys, no shit, who cares? Men beat up short guys. I know I'm not that short, but I'm skinny, so I feel small, right? Yeah. I look so easy to bully, man. Do you know how easy to bully I look? Kids could bully me because I look like them. Adults could bully me because I look like their kids. Like, you don't understand, I'm fun for the whole family. I'm like a wheel reader. <laughs> I'm fun for the whole family, I'm like a golden retriever with a monopoly tattoo. I'm fun for the whole family, I'm like Disney World the human. <laughs> that was like a... I wanted to open strong. That's the strongest you're gonna get. So... <laughs> So it's true, I haven't been here for a while, so um, I kind of just... Let's check on the crowd, how are you guys doing? You said your, your name was Jack and your mom? Oh, you guys have been dating for three, three days or three days? Three, three days or dates? 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 I wasn't paying attention. What was the first day? Home <laughs> team, bro. We were watching football. Mm. 
Don't ask me this. What was the second thing? Yeah, the second thing. Where? I'm getting uh, ready for you. I'm gonna move on to another. <laughs> Pretty sure he knows the subject. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, how are you guys doing? Doing great? Um, are all of you together? Oh, okay, cool. How do you guys meet, by the way? I know, I know this is like a like a deep cut, but I have nothing to talk about, so... Like all of you! Give me another one. I'm not really sorry. College? Give me the... Give me inside baseball. Like, what are, what are you guys doing? Like all of you. <laughs> it's like, like the first episode of like, like a sitcom, bro. Just like, tell me how um, like one of you dropped their books or something and you picked them up and they're like, oh my god. Is she also with you? We, we came here and had a drink. And then like, oh, wait, she just showed up from nowhere. Wait, I want to know all of your names. What's your name? I'm Tito, this is Linda. Tito, Linda. How about the other two? Jenny. Wait, which one's Jenny? Jenny. <laughs> Bye, Jenny, and start my way a little bit. I know, um, I'm despicable. I have one minute? Alright, uh, I guess I'll try old stuff. I think people who smoke have a pretty cool life. But probably have an even cooler death. Especially if you chose to get cremated. But there's something poetic about smoking and getting turned into ash. It's like really, really loving orange juice and getting killed by OJ. <coughs> That's a really old joke. Wow, wow. Webs of that joke. Very old. Auntie, give it up for Jacob for hosting this night in a wonderful night. We've had some fun. We've been shouting at. We have uh, we've been accused falsely about discriminations. Give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. <laughs> Louis Carroll, everybody. Louis Carroll. Jack and Mara, it seemed like you may be in trouble understanding him at some point. Would that be fair? I'm like staff, so I came here. No, you don't have to make up excuses. He's from Galveston, Texas. A lot of people can't understand his accent. You ever been to Galveston, Texas? That's what they sound like. That's a Galveston accent right there. Uh, all right, we're down to our final two comedians of the evening. Sorry, I was waiting for the applause to die down. I guess that wasn't coming at all, but that's fine. All right, we're down to your final two comics of the evening. Your next comedian is a, uh, who's? Okay, I was about to ask whose phone is this, and I realized it's the same model as my phone. I was like, oh shit, you're gonna be an idiot on stage. Uh, someone let your phone here. Oh, is that yours? Yeah. Galveston, Texas, everybody. They're, they're, they're on another planet down there. It's a different time zone. Your next comedian, a very funny man. Everybody put your hands together. The very funny, the very talented, and the very on time big Scotty! All right, big Scotty. And he said by saying I'm an acrobatic lover, so my new favorite comedy. That was great. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Yes, Big Scotty, you're great. All right. Big Scotty, you just said at the end there, my wife does this thing all the time now where, like, uh, the baby's big enough that's growing inside of her that we can feel the kicks, and she's always like, come over here, kiss the baby goodnight, kiss the baby goodnight. But because she's having a boy, you know, boys carry lower, she's like, kiss the baby goodnight. And I come over and I, I kiss the baby, and she's like, no, he's, he's lower than that. And I'm like, okay, and I kiss the baby. She's like, no, last kick, like right here. And I'm like, bitch, if I'm, if I go, if I kiss you right here, you're not going to bed. Like, this is not, <laughs> if you get me to kiss here, this, this, the conversation continues. And, and then, and yeah, yeah, she's like, kid, this is where the baby is. And I'm like, well, I agree, that's where I want to be too. But we both can't be there at the same time. That's weird for a father and son to do together. <laughs> Unless you're in Tijuana, then I guess it's cool, you know? But anyways, my dad and I are drunks. Uh, all right, the final comedian of the night. Do you like this country? 
Okay. Hey, you answered. You are suspicious now. The fucking ginger scourge. I've been to You've been to Switzerland. Oh, so you're neutral. I get it. Your next comedian is a member of these United States Armed Forces. He's out there every day fighting for your freedom. Now, he is technically just sort of living in an apartment and going to training on the weekends, but he's still fighting for your freedom, you communist son of a bitch. Don't be an ungrateful piece of shit. A hero. Chris Sipple, everybody. Chris Sipple. Sergeant First Class Hero, Chris Sipple. Chris Sibyl, everybody, thought that Jesus turned wine into water. Maybe if you thought that the Bible was an MOS for getting into heaven, he'd learn it. Ah, military stuff. All right, everybody. That is, uh, that's been the show. Now, you guys have been absolute peaches. Thank you for coming out. This was so fun. I'm glad you had fun. This is normally like a much more raucous and wild show with a lot of comics. Come out again sometime. You, you come out like the two days before a holiday. Half of these comedians, they live off of their parents' income. They've gone home already. They have to. Do you guys like these things, or is this like just? Uh, oh, we like when people come. Yeah, we just can't get them to do it. Yeah, yeah. But we do like when people come. Yeah, yeah. So please come. Oh no, no, no. you can roast whoever you want. I am always telling them, leave paying customers the fuck alone. But you can see they don't listen to me at all. They have their own minds and I suffer for it. You have two minds. Uh, I've done that before and it actually just gets really nasty and unfun. <laughs> at a certain point, I'm 11 years in and I'm like, fuck you, I told you already, stop. <laughs> and that's not fun for anybody, believe it or not. But I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, this is a comedy from Home Sweet Home. We will be here again next in two weeks. We're here every first, third, and fifth Tuesday of the month. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye.